Hello everyone, welcome back to the Epic Flight Academy. My name is Mike Thompson. This is the Private Pilot Ground School. Now, we are thrilled that you're watching these videos. To be successful in this course though, remember there's three parts. These videos are part one, part two, and most importantly, Epic's online course, and thirdly, please review this content with your flight instructor. So, what is our topic today? Well, we've been talking about instruments lately, and today we wanna to get into the altimeter. Now, we're gonna talk about the altimeter in terms of how it operates, how to read it, and then some of the common errors and different types of altitude that we find in altimetry. So let's get started. Here's a cutaway of the altimeter. Now, I'd like you to notice something very specifically. We had talked previously about the static system. And the static system supplies static air to this altimeter case. And you can see that right here. It's coming in the back of the case. So the inside of your altimeter is at the same static air pressure at the altitude that the airplane is flying. But take a careful look at this cutaway and notice there's three disks here, or we call these wafers. Now, these aneroid wafers are pressurized at 29.92 inches of mercury. These aneroid wafers are going to expand or contract depending upon the air inside the case. So imagine your aircraft goes up in altitude, the air pressure lowers, as we already know, so the pressure inside the case lowers because of that static air connection. That allows the wafers to expand. When those wafers expand, it moves a series of levers and gears and moves the three indicators on the face of the altimeter. By the same token, if your aircraft descends, now higher pressure air is coming through the static line into the case and compressing those three aneroid wafers. And again, it moves the linkages and positions the three hands on the face of the instrument. So, in essence, it's a pretty simple operation. The altimeter is really a barometer. The altimeter measures air pressure. If you think about it that way, then it makes sense. It measures air pressure and it indicates altitude. That's why we call it indicated altitude. You got it. Now, how does it indicate altitude? We already saw how the mechanism moves these three hands. Well, let's take a look at the face of the instrument and let's take a look at those three hands more closely. The smallest hand is on this thin line and it's got a big triangle. That we call our 10,000 foot pointer. That means this triangle will move from zero to one for every 10,000 feet. The next hand is the small hand or the short hand. We call that the 1,000 foot pointer. The 1,000 foot pointer will move from zero to one for every 1,000 feet. And then the third and final hand is the long skinny one. That we call the 100 foot pointer and it moves from zero to one for every, you got it, 100 feet. Now notice between zero and one there are some tick marks. There's five tick marks between zero and one. 
So if I'm using the 100 foot pointer, each tick mark is 20 feet. So we've taken a look at the cutaway and we've taken a look at the altimeter face. Key point to remember, going back to that cutaway, the altimeter is a barometer that measures pressure and moving over to the face of the altimeter indicates altitude, hence the name indicated altitude. Now that's important because <clears throat> there are different types of altitude. The first one is indicated, and that is simply what we see on the face of the altimeter. Now, believe it or not, that might not be my actual altitude. To get to my actual altitude, or in other words, my true altitude, I need to correct for both pressure and temperature. Now, remember in earlier discussions, we had talked about a standard atmosphere and standard pressure at sea level. This diagram shows pressure altitude measured from the reference datum of 29.92 inches of mercury. So I take my pressure altitude and correct it for temperature, and I'm going to get my true or MSL altitude. That means my true altitude above mean sea level. Now, if you take a closer look at this diagram, you see that terrain changes. I can go from sea level, up a hillside, up some mountains, and terrain changes as we go up into hilly or mountainous areas of any particular you know, land or continent. And there's an important altitude here called absolute or AGL altitude. AGL means above ground level. That's my absolute altitude. So it is possible that I could be flying up in the Midwest around Chicago or Milwaukee, maybe. And if you take a look on the charts, you're going to see that these airports are in reality about 500 feet above sea level. So if I was flying around at 3,000 feet MSL, take a look right here, I might only be 2,500 feet above the surface of the ground, or my AGL or absolute altitude would be 2,500 feet. So that's an important distinction to remember. There are different types of altitude. Now let's talk a little bit about some common altimetry errors, and these have to do primarily with pressure and temperature. Let's look at pressure first. Remember the altimeter is a barometer. The way the altimeter works is it measures pressure through the static port and indicates altitude on the face of the instrument. Well, I can put a pressure setting into my altimeter. That's called an, you guessed it, altimeter setting. So take a look at this aircraft here. This aircraft in position A has a particular altimeter setting. That barometer in that altimeter is going to follow that pressure line if I'm trying to hold that altitude. Now that could lead to a dangerous situation if I'm not adjusting my altimeter setting. I'm just flying a constant altitude while my barometer, my altimeter, follows this pressure line. If I'm just following this pressure line and I'm not making adjustments for variations in surface pressure, my, uh, my airplane, as you can see here, is descending, even though the indication on the altimeter is a constant altitude, the barometer is following the pressure line. 
So that's potentially hazardous, and that's why we change altimeter settings along our route. That's also why we have a little memory aid to help us avoid this error. And the memory aid goes like this. From high to low, watch out below. What that means is, if I'm flying from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure, and I'm not adjusting my altimeter setting, holding a constant altitude will actually cause me to decrease my absolute altitude. All right, so that's pressure corrections. Let's take a look also at temperature. Now we know that warm air is less dense. Cold air is very much more dense. In this diagram, you can see a similar error. If my altimeter is set to a particular altimeter setting, and I'm at this position in warm air, if I'm flying toward cold air and I don't change any of those settings, that air is going to be more dense. And so the barometer in my altimeter is going to follow that pressure line down into that dense air. Once again, I may be descending dangerously low. So, <clears throat> again, we have a memory aid here. From hot to cold, look out below. If I'm flying from warm temperatures to cool temperatures, I'm going to look out below, I could be descending. So, if we put it all together, <clears throat> the memory aid sounds like this. From high to low or hot to cold, look out below. And now you know the reason why. So that gives us a good overview of the altimeter. Here's a review question to wrap it up. What does an altimeter actually measure? Well, that's it for today, folks. Come back and see us next time.